Today's the the sixth of October, and uh, doing a little visit with Tom Wickham, and so I'll just begin. Tom, maybe um, take us back to <laughs> uh, you know you're at Lawrence College and uh, finishing up. Uh, how, did, how did that all occur? Where you wound up at Western Dubuque? Well, it's uh, the first interview, I actually interviewed down at Muscatine, and uh, uh, they, uh, they had kind of a shared time program where I could have taught Latin, and I had a minor in Latin. I really didn't want to teach Latin. <laughs> and the guy tells me that uh, history teachers are a dime a dozen, which I didn't appreciate <laughs> hearing that. <laughs> So then I interviewed a Holy Cross with Father Hemsath and uh, Father John. Yeah, they had a deal where uh, they had a a pretty new house they'd built right next to the cemetery and the school that we could have got that for free and and four thousand dollars salary. But Father John uh, kind of hesitated a little bit. In the meantime, uh, Brenda gets a call from Wayne Drexler, and I don't know. I talked to Bud Noonan. Uh, not too long ago, and he says that he remembers telling me about it in front of the Laura's Field House. <laughs> so either way, I, so I met Wayne at Piasta, and there's this house, and he says, "Well, yeah, this is a school." <laughs> and uh, so we go in the front door and walk up the steps to go upstairs, and there's a huge area that's kind of an open study hall type of a deal where you could sit all 47 of the kids <laughs> that were at Piasta. So uh, well, that, was the, it was the, that was the interview. It was, we never sat down at a desk or anything. Uh, he was a buddy of Bud Noonan, so I think he kind of knew what he was getting. And uh, so uh, he just, I remember him telling me, oh, uh, Ralph Buckman's your principal, and he's a peach of a guy. Yeah, so you'll you'll like him. But I never even met Buck before they end up hiring me. So, uh, so that was uh, like in the spring of your senior year. Yeah. So you you were married by then, right? Yeah, I was married my senior year, and uh, it's kind of funny how you know when you do things. I had coached uh, cathedral grade school kids my freshman and sophomore year, basketball and softball, and then. The last summer, I think, I coached, I was assistant coach for St. Pat's Holy Name League team. And Bud Noonan and his brother Frank both were coaches, one at St. Anthony's, one at Nativity. And, uh, you know, I never real made the connection that, you know, this might have something to do with what you were going to do the rest of your life. And so... Uh, so you know, kind of made a connection through their co yeah, coaching. Yeah, and I think he probably saw me playing in intramurals and things, but did and and so um, so that was how how I was hired. So like I said, forty seven kids, twenty three boys, and twenty four girls. <laughs> I taught junior history the first year. There's seven seven kids, so it was kind of hard for them not to do their homework. <laughs> What was your what was your starting salary? Uh, it was forty six fifty. Our base was forty four, and we got two fifty for coaching baseball and, and basketball. Oh, it was fall and spring baseball. Yeah, <laughs> and the first night they, we had a kind of an eighth period, which was you could start practice early. And the high school at Epworth had that for a while too. <laughs> so baseball in the fall. We go out and we're practicing and all of a sudden the buses pull up and the bell rings and all my kids run off to get on the bus <laughs> at uh, 3.15 or whatever it was. Well, well, I ended up changing that. <laughs> but I guess the coach before me, that's all they, they practiced it was uh, that 45 minute last period, period day. So we had basketball, 22 of the 23 boys came out for basketball, of course. Uh, well, uh, AJ Spiegel was my point guard, and okay. quite quite left-handed, I might say. But he, he told me later that he uh, he missed 54 days his senior year. I said, "Well, you were always there for baseball and basketball practice and games." <laughs> well, uh, so um, who put the schedules together back then? Uh, like the well. Uh, 
Buck was officially our principal, and uh, I think he did. Uh, Irene Hall lived in the back of that house, and she had to stoke the furnace. <laughs> and uh, she was a little on the traditional side. I remember I, there were two young teachers uh, that had just graduated from college, and uh, so. Uh, we, we had to have somebody that would sell the pop candy bars during the game, and of course I needed somebody to keep score. So Irene Hall told uh, told Dave Stetson to be the scorekeeper and Jim Davis to be the pop seller. Well, I find out that Jim Davis, the pop seller, used to keep score at the U of Dubuque. So uh, I had to negotiate this with Irene Hall, which was, and then of course the the, the guy was a business teacher that had to make the change. So I, so I said you got to be a little flexible, and she threw that back in my face quite a few times through the year. <laughs> but uh, it was fun, fun group. Some of the teachers taught at Epworth, and uh, in fact, both of them did. I think I was the only full time teacher at PS. I had all the phys- physical education. I may have told you a story. Oh, we lost a buck over in the cracker box, really bad, seventy-two to thirty-eight or something like that. Hit the three, two, three zone, and they were almost holding the hands, and we're running into the pole. And so then uh, we played them later in the year, and Buck would stop at our school, and then he'd go down to the elementary schools of Bernard and somewhere. And so he came in the first period, and that was the period we had phys ed. And he says to Tim Scale. Uh, what are you guys doing? He Tim says, "Well, we're working on plays to beat you." <laughs> of course, I was supposed to be a teacher. Says that <laughs> the lines were a little blurred That's back funny. then, and then we did beat them forty-one to forty. <laughs> Buck accused me of uh, undoing the the one light under the basket. Was, on that, the, was one official or two? Oh, uh, there was two officials. So I think. Is, yeah, I remember. Uh, back in that period, I was calling a couple places where it turned out there was just one yeah, official. Yeah. But, uh, so that was 61, 62. Yeah. Uh, and so by the end of that year, uh, the high school was under construction? Yeah, they were building it that year, and then we moved in in the fall of 62. Uh, was far from being done. They had no cafeteria. The gym wasn't done. Uh, they were still pulling wire and getting electricity in some of the rooms. Uh, I remember one day Buck come in and says, and you know, you'd have a worker back there. He says one day you know, they do they need to do some real, real big time stuff. Can you move your class outside? My history class. So we went out by the football field and I had them sit down. I was at the bottom of the hill and then we had our history lesson and, and the, some of the kids were saying, well, it's just like the Sermon on the Mount, Mr. Wickham. <laughs> but uh, Buck was, Buck was uh, how small our school was. I taught all the U.S. history, so there were like 70 juniors probably, two, two sections. I taught all the boys and girls phys ed in the in the school, and uh, and Buck and then Hermie came at the semester and he took some of the phys ed classes. But uh, <laughs> uh, Buck was a boys and boys basketball and baseball head coach. Besides being principal, also besides being principal of the elementary schools, and uh, I felt I was a sophomore, of course. And poor Buck, I felt sorry for him because. The gym didn't, I think the middle of January, the gym was about ready to go, and our glass bank boards came and one of them was shattered. <laughs> so we had been playing all our games on the road, nowhere to practice. We tracked us in the Epworth Cracker Box in the Farley Multipurpose Room. Oh. And so, and then he had kids from every school that were blending together in that first year. We had kids from New Vienna, Cascade, Farley, Piasta. <coughs> and so we didn't play any home games till the end of January or maybe a little earlier, the 20th. And they were finally starting to get together and then the season was over. <laughs> okay. But, uh, and then he gave up the basketball 
let's see, did he give it up? Or, yeah, I guess he gave the basketball up that year. Then I became the basketball coach. Uh, yeah, 63-64. That was my first year. Okay, well, what about baseball? Uh, he kept the baseball. He loved baseball. And uh, so he kept the baseball till I think till Carl Hyen came. Okay. And uh, Carl became the head coach. And I was at Buck's assistant till till Carl came, I think. Yeah. Okay, so that was sixty-three, sixty-four. Yeah, I think Carl might have came in sixty-five okay. or something. Okay, so it could have been sixty-four, sixty-five. Uh, Carl might have came. So at some point then, during that period, there was another bond referendum regarding Farley? Uh, well, that was later, because uh, Farley didn't open until 69, so right. probably had the referendum in 67 yeah, or 68, something like that. So you stayed, you stayed then at the high school? I was, I... Until I taught, I only actually taught the high school four years, um, at the high school level, and then luckily, I mean, I, I was just lucky that everything worked out. But, uh, I had started a master's program at Loris. I started the first two summers I was in history, and then I switched to educational administration, and uh, as, uh, well, we had three kids by then, uh, starving to death, so... <laughs> so uh, uh, so Buck and, and and Buck our high school was gr growing quite yeah. a bit every year. So oh, yeah, cause so Buck uh, gave up the elementary in uh, uh, fall of '65. I became the first elementary principal. I had all the schools, and then Buck just stayed at the high school. And he was still coaching the baseball. I think he was. But. Okay. <coughs> you still working for the railroad back then, or? <laughs> yeah, I worked on the railroad from 58 till like 67 or so. I thought, uh, yeah, I worked like a couple nights a week. What did what you have to do? Or? Uh, I was, uh, technically I was a clerk, but I, I was kind of like the night uh, yard master. I worked with the switch crew and uh, I'd have to check the cars. And we had passenger trains back then. We had uh, actually three passenger trains would come in when I was working. Okay. Land a corner would come in. I'd have to sell tickets and little baggage on the card and, uh, and mail. There were mail, mail we had on the load too. So, and then there was two night trains in the middle of the night. So I'd work two or three nights and I'd work vacations in the summer. So I remember that. Yeah. <clears throat> land of corn because I have had an uncle uh, <laughs> and he lived in Chicago and uh, he worked for the Illinois Central uh, but he also had a, a drinking problem and uh, many railroad guys did yeah, so, at any rate uh, <laughs> he'd go on a, a drinking bench and my aunt would, would call out to our farm and say she was sending him out for a while <laughs> to dry out, oh, so dear. we'd have to go pick him up at Independence, uh, get him off the train, and take him home. <laughs> and he'd be there for four or five days, and then we'd ship him back mm. to Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of the railroads. Well, you know, they were. If you were a trainman, which my dad and my brother were, uh, <laughs> you'd go out on a job one day. And you'd stay overnight in Freeport or Rockford or wherever you're going, Fort Dodge, and then you'd come back the next day, and then you had the third day off. <laughs> <coughs> so you're on the road two out of every three days, and you're on, you're away from home. Yeah, <laughs> one out of three nights. <laughs> so were they? Were they? Uh, it was easy to. to <laughs> Developed problem. Developed well, drinking problem. There was probably tradition there too. <laughs> so were they were they like engineers or uh, they were uh, brakemen and car uh, conductors. Okay. No, that's they were on the rear end of the train. Contrast the engineers. And I always thought that was such a a travesty when they uh, when they got rid of the cabooses. <laughs> yeah. What's a train without a caboose? But. Well, I, my first, uh, after I graduated from high school, I was going to work summers, and I went to Waterloo and uh, 
took some tests and I did well on the academic test. It had to have 20-20 vision <laughs> to be a trainman back okay. then. It couldn't be correct either. Really? Okay. So, so, uh, so I didn't work that summer, uh, mm-hmm. the railroads. And then the next summer I went back as a, officially a clerk, which you, you could do a lot of different things. Yeah. But uh, there were neat experiences. <laughs> And uh, when I gra- when I finished up uh, uh, the last year, well, when I when I got my degree and and could have be- and became a teacher, I could have made the same amount of money uh, working full time at the railroad. But I, okay. I could see that the future was no. probably going to be brighter <laughs> in education. So you started okay. You started on your master's at Loris, then. Uh... Yeah, I actually started the first summer. I don't know why or. Uh, why I did, but it was kind of a good idea. Because I, I, in 66, there were five of us who got our masters, and I was in that first group of Dick Wright. And, yeah, see, I remember uh, uh, Jim McCarthy told me, must have been 63 or 4, 63 maybe, he said Matt Lawrence is going to start a master's program. Mm-hmm. So I, I got started in 64. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, I remember it was twenty dollars an, uh, an hour was the first first tuition cost. Well, the first two summers, the Catholic University actually had a program okay. there, and I went to Catholic U the first uh, two summers, six weeks, and then they pulled out, and Loris did start a program. I was able to transfer my credits. Okay. So, yeah, how many summers did you go then? To? Six. Okay. Six, uh, six hours every summer, 36. Yeah. When did you get yours then? I got mine in 67. Okay. Uh, 64, yeah, four, four summers. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> at any rate, um, so then was 60, 67. So then uh, Farley opened up for you? Um, uh, not till 69. 69. And uh, but we had uh, Dick Willow was teaching. Uh, he was teaching English at the high school, and uh, he became a he he. They, I had six six schools. I was teaching elementary phys ed to the older kids too, uh, three, four, six, six. But and uh, so then uh, Dick became the principal of Bernard and Cascade. So then I just had the four, I don't know whether that was one year or two, and then I helped when they were making the plans for the Farley School, and that was supposed to be a huge school. And uh, But by the time it opened, we were, we were out of room already. <laughs> instead, of, instead of having two sections of some grades, we had four. Yeah. And the middle school or junior high kids, that, that had grown so fast too. So... Wasn't long. We pretty soon we had fourteen portables, like the high school and everybody else. Yeah. But, uh, we had that was that was kind of we had eleven hundred and twenty kids there uh, at one time. We could we had some shared time pro kill kids from St. Joe's, and uh, you know we had uh, we had the older special needs kids. So we had kids at preschool. We had kids probably from three to twenty one, and we had. K, K through eight, which was a pretty good spread. I mean, you were you were there for some yeah. of that. Oh yeah. And uh, but it worked pretty good. You know, we tried to keep so them then, separated. Eventually, uh, the older special needs kids in Wentworth, Epworth, at some point. Right? Yeah. Well, I think they went your way to Dyersville. Well, I yeah, I did have them for for a while, and then they came back to our place, and then they went to the high school yeah. where it's more age appropriate. And I don't remember. I don't remember what the. Year that was. Uh, no, I don't either. But uh, okay. Um, that first year of teaching, uh, I remember. Like I said, we didn't have a gym, so I was a phys ed teacher, and uh, we didn't get a gym till the middle of January. So uh, <laughs> we did have blacktop in front of the school, <laughs> and uh, we didn't have nearly the cars that they do nowadays. <laughs> so, uh, and we had these big targets. And archery equipment. So uh, 
I would take the girls out there on the blacktop, and I remember we were out there in December, and the girls were wearing their fur coats, and we're <laughs> doing archery, and then I would take the boys up on top, and we would play. You know, I had like 36 kids in the first period, boys, phys ed, and we'd, we'd, we'd do football up there. And then I don't so think was it, that kind of a level? Yeah, area? it was. Uh, it was pretty okay. level. We'd, and I'd, we'd do some drills and stuff and go over some fundamentals, and then we'd... And uh, the kids were good about it. They, you know, they liked, you know, activity, organized uh, games, and then we had intramurals too. But uh, yeah, Dave Walker helped me with the intramurals. I kind of remember that. And then uh, I, when I went to one of the reunions of fifty or fifty one, fifty year one last year or last summer, I remember uh, the Conley girls from Farley. They were good archer. Uh, they're good at archery, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. Uh, what strikes kids and people that they remember certain things that were uh, important to them uh, yeah. when they were in school and um, back in, back in those days. Um, so then, uh, <clears throat> I remember just that. <laughs> One thing I remember is kind of funny because they were doing the, they were putting the floor tile down right outside the, the locker room, and there was a door that went out to the north. But unfortunately for the guys that were putting the glue down <laughs> and doing the tile, we had to bring the the targets with the hay <laughs> over out that door <laughs> and the targets you know the hay is getting in the tar and uh, oh, God. they weren't too happy with us but uh, they were being worked they were paying by the hours <laughs> <laughs> just <they> just <laughs> well that, okay so then that was uh, how about uh, that was the years of the Eastern Iowa Conference of course you know, yeah lots of lots of memories of, of uh, those games and home and away and um, but I did not realize. Who is this? Yeah, yeah, we were the only public school in the league uh, initially. There was, I think there was five or six schools, high schools probably. And uh, well, we had obviously Cascade, Akron, Farley, St. Joe's, Holy Cross, New Vienna. Am I missing one other Bellamy one? Marquette. Who? Bellevue Marquette, was it? Well, they came in a little later. So they were later? They came in a little later. Um, and then later, even later than that, then we added, oh, Guttenberg might have been in there, Ryan. I'm thinking uh, Ryan, maybe. Yeah, for a while. But And then uh, uh, O-Line Sacred Heart. And yeah, that was later They on. came in uh, later, yeah, um, 67 or 66 or something like that. Well, uh, the big thing for the, you know, the year was the conference tournament. Um, which was either going to be at Cascade or Epworth because those are the two biggest facilities. I, and I just uh, remember people, people in the Raptors oh, yeah. for those games. I mean, yeah. The, uh, I remember when we won the, in 65, it was at our place, and they were, you know, they were. Line or they were standing right next to the out of bounds play under both baskets. You know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> the players were pretty limited in <laughs> where they could go for the ball. It was right. that was the only game in town back then, I oh. guess, because they really packed packed in for yeah, that. Yeah, no cable TV or no other distractions. Though uh, that was if you wanted. To to be entertained, that was the place to go, that's for sure. What year did you start at Farley Central? I started at uh, 64, 65, uh, was okay. my first year at Farley. Um, and uh, I, uh, I had Dick Phillips, I remember Dick Phillips was on that team. And Dick was a pretty good athlete, but he had uh, very slow feet. and. Uh, I think he had the record for falling out basically of about, about every every game, as I recall. He never seemed to be able to finish the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But um, at any rate, uh, so you guys, uh, 
you guys took took buses to away games and, uh, back then. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Went, uh, first year at Piasta, uh, uh, like I said, Irene Hall made the rules, so she told me right away we had four cheerleaders. So four cheerleaders would sit in the two seats in the front opposite the driver. <laughs> And then I think I was supposed to sit right behind the driver, and the players were supposed to sit in the back. And can we call that the Piazza Shuffle there? But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we, I know. Well, it, it talked about Eastern Iowa Conference, and then uh, the first year I coached at Piazza, I probably told you this story, but uh, we didn't have any divisions. Uh, we lost our first four, five games, uh, soft, or baseball games, that I was coaching. And we then went down to Bellevue, and it was almost dark, and we beat them in an extra inning game or something. But in the spring, we drew, in the first round of the state tournament, we drew Walter. <laughs> I had student taught there, and I coached the Holy Aim League, and I knew a lot of those kids, and they were very good ball players. They'd been second state the year before. <clears throat> We draw them the first first round, so it's a Saturday in the spring. I think we're playing at Epworth, uh, the Divine Word Field or something. And, uh, uh, so we come to the field, and, and we only got eight guys. So I says uh, to the, one of my guys, well, they said, Marty, Marty Kramer's plowing right over the... <laughs> uh, over the hill. I says, go get Marty and get a uniform and bring him here. So they got him out the tractor. He was our ninth guy. And uh, we're playing Eddie Colbert, who I had student taught and worked with in the coaching. And uh, so I knew it wasn't going to be a good day. Uh, we did the, the toss and we won. And you always want to take last bat, and I hesitated because I wasn't sure if we could get him out. So, but I did take last bat, and we did get him out. But unfortunately, we did get him out when the score was 9-0, and uh, AJ Spiegel speared a, a line drive that was going over the right center field fence, oh and uh, he got the third out. So then we batted, and then they batted again. And uh, uh, it wasn't going well, so uh, we finally I bring Jer Jerry Wired in. He was about the fourth pitcher, and he was a senior and threw very hard, but he never knew where it was going to go. <laughs> but he did get him out, and we lost 25 to nothing. <laughs> Had we not caught that ball at 9-0, it would have been a 10-run rule, and we would have been done. <laughs> but we had to go that second inning. <laughs> so that was quite an embarrassing, to say the least, to see the headlines in the paper the next day. <laughs> 25 to nothing, and I've told AJ about that more than once that uh, he shouldn't have caught that. Could have saved further embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but God. they had no divisions back then, and it was. Uh, and they had 2,400 kids, and we had 23 boys. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, I guess I'd eventually. Uh, somebody in the athletic association eventually felt that maybe there should be some divisions made. And actually, from a financial standpoint, I think it probably made a lot of sense as yeah. far as um, being able to advance into the districts or whatever. Um, I always thought it was uh, um, amazing. Um, Regarding the back in the that era of the fifties and sixties, I did a little work for the uh, with the Telegraph Herald um, regarding the Archdiocese tournament oh, yeah. because I played in it. And uh, at any rate, um, I worked with uh, Bud Leg from the Athletic Association, and uh, uh, I was curious because uh, there there were about forty parochial high schools. Uh, in the archdiocese, yeah. and uh, I asked Bud Leg if he would research, and I don't remember ever.
hearing of a parochial high school advancing to the state tournament during that period of time. Oh. And he did re research it, and he said, you're right, that mm -hmm. never happened. Not until St. Mary's uh, Clinton, maybe? Was that well, the but they were, so that was, that was um, the Davenport Diocese. Oh, yeah. I, I was just... That's true, yeah. Um, connected with... Yeah. Them. Uh, like even the Morris Academy? And, and they went in 48, but uh, the state. They did go to 48? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but uh, they're right, they're right, all those, well, they weren't, weren't too big schools. They did have, what, four or five divisions. That, that was always thinking, like, uh, was, uh, why didn't, uh, like, all my sake of heart, they never, they never advanced. <coughs> even with those good teams they had. Did they have two high schools at Owain for a yeah. while? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that probably <laughs> yeah. part of it then. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but um, at any rate, uh, there was right at, <clears throat> right at 40 high schools, and by 1965, there was probably, I don't know, a dozen or so, maybe yeah. left, something like that. Anyway, uh, so... Back into the, uh, <laughs> you're going into the 70s at, at uh, June, the mid, middle school, elementary at Farley, um, and uh, what, what, what other memories do you remember about that period of time? Uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah, it was a busy time, and like I said, it was a pretty good sized school. The first year uh, I didn't have an assistant and uh, we had a lot of kids and you know you'd, everything was brand new in terms of setting a program up and in terms of setting up a schedule and uh, um, you didn't have any you know, precedent. No precedent. <laughs> so it was, you were, so I, I organized all that and, uh, and then we probably, uh, I'm not sure, at one time we had 457th and 8th graders. I don't know that we had that many at that time. But, uh, so, uh, you know, that was a school in itself. And then you had uh, the middle schools and your grades would get bigger. There were sections, more sections as you get older. Yeah. And then, uh, and we had 14 special needs teachers, but I, that was, that might have been later. But uh, first year, I, I, Diane Heights was the, the counselor, and so I, I leaned on her quite a bit, and she helped. Uh, she helped quite a bit. Okay. And then the next next year, I got an assistant, and Jim O'Mara's assistant. I don't know how many years he was there, and then then, okay. you, then you came over uh, uh, later. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, but there were some fun times. I remember that. Of course, some of the eighth graders were, um, <coughs> they'd been kind of neglected. They were in portables behind the high school. And <coughs> the teachers were kind of on their own <coughs> somewhat. So when they got over to Farley, they wanted to spread their wings a little bit. And we had a combination of teachers. We had a few very traditional ones and some younger ones. <laughs> One day I remember there was a fight on the top of the steps there in the, the new wing. <coughs> I could see that. So I'm coming up the, it was before school. So there's about six steps going up there and I took them about two or three at a time and <laughs> come sliding up to <coughs> one of our <coughs> favorite citizens as he was about to swing and hit this guy. and. <laughs> I I'm, I don't know whether my shoes were slippery or whatever, but I, I slid on the terrazzo floor and cut his legs out. <laughs> and uh, oh my God, there are the two of us in a pile on the floor. I don't know about the third guy or not, but uh, it broke up the fight pretty quick. <laughs> and I thought, geez, this guy's really mean. <laughs> mean are we supposed to fight? <laughs> um, he mentioned. Oh man! Well. You mentioned Jim O'Mara. <laughs> Go ahead. Get some water. Here. <laughs> you want some, Bobby? Yeah. 